Welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Jacob. How are you doing, man? Hello. Hello. So, for the audience at home, uh, Jacob is... Well, technically, this is not his first appearance. Uh, his uh, first appearance is me reading his letter in a quote-unquote special where he breaks down what was technically his review and discussion about the uh, season 10 comic opener and now we got him here in voice so yay such travels to get you uh. it's all good man but anyway how are you doing man how are you doing i'm doing fine I'm mostly working on personal things for a while now writing a comic <laughs> Writing and drawing a comic, but also doing something on the side regarding the MLP. Ah, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, before we officially start, I need to ask, um, what do you think of G5? Like, what do you think of it in in in, in general? In general, I'll be completely honest with you. I'm procrastinating. <laughs> <laughs> really, I, I know the movie came out like what in november but i just can't force myself to watch it <laughs> oh. ah, all right so basically you you're just uh taking your time um absorbing all of g4 fully <laughs> yeah. anything anything that you feel like or anything that you think that you don't like for g5 i mean i i just find it uh, very fascinating on this end yeah, I I know there's this um, desire to know about uh, the well Equestria like a thousand years later, but then there's this part on the other end, like those who uh, who watch the whole of G four and how it came to an end, and then you wonder how bad did this. The, the main the main six or well main seven if you count spike in mm-hmm. this point screw up the things <laughs> basically turned full post apocalypse that oh yeah that that, that is or, mm-hmm. or well in G five post post apocalypse set. that that is one that, that is very interesting because I, hmm, uh that is another comic that will be out soonish I guess but yeah I, I totally agree with you man like the idea of that happening like what did twilight do (laughs) yeah precisely that's what that's the whole downer and the whole thing like the fan the final few seconds shows and shows up that perfect happy ending like the heroes have gone and achieved the pinnacle of their life and they're gonna make sure that the whole world they have brought together will prosper and last for for eternity. Mm. And then it turns out in the end that it's not. Yeah, I mean, my, my headcanon theory was that G5 is locked away in its own realm of Equestria. Uh, it has something to do with some villain locking them up in something like that and splitting them from the proper Equestria. But with the comics saying that, oh no, they went to Cantalot and Cantalot is... Um, abandoned and so on. Like, like I, I would really love to know what the hell happened. What is this? Okay. Sorry, Discord did it. <laughs> yeah, I, probably, but you know, whenever honest... something goes wrong in the question, you can just say Discord did it because that's the case in everything that goes wrong. That's true, but um, my my other theory is blamed blame Sunset. She brought in tech into that world, and everybody's using cell phones now. <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> I don't know what's worse, the post-apocalypse or, or social media. Why not both? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I stand correct. <laughs> All righty then. So, anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony comic, Spirit of the Forest, issue number one. In this issue, the Cutie Mark Crusaders discover White Tail Woods to be covered in trash during a camping trip. All right, this is simple enough. Um, we don't really get white tail wood that much, and this is a really good ex- sorry. This is a really good representation. All right, cool, cool. So, anywho, 
Um, Jacob, what do you think of this issue? First impressions. Well, uh, I had to go back and reread it because it's been so long. Mm, but here. otherwise, the story that it's trying to tell, it's, uh, I mean, it's okay. It's got uh, one of my favorite writers in the comic series, Ted Anderson, who's got a pretty good good track record, except for maybe one or two, maybe three issues at tops, but otherwise it's fine. And it's got Brenda Hickey and Heather Brecker are, are perfect combo for this. Mm-hmm. I mean, Heather Brecker does almost everything. Uh, she does yeah. 99% of the comic coloring. So, yeah, I mean, it's a safe bet to say that she can... <laughs> I, I'm afraid to say that she can do no wrong because there are some parts where, hmm, that's wrong. <laughs> but well, she's mm-hmm. okay. She's okay. <clears throat> um, but anywho, uh, as for me, uh, I, I like this issue. The, the issue is one of those... Uh, it, it may lean in the preachy side, but once you go further in, it raises a lot of questions that are kind of hard to answer. But I, I'll just save that for later. So anyway, if you guys at home have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So anywho, uh, let's start well, let's start by, well, with our main hero, the CMC. Uh, walking around Whitetail Woods, trying to go for a nice weekend camping trip and so on. And they do the usual stuff. Um, set campfires, uh, build a tent, uh, make sure their food is not um, accessible to bears and so on. And after doing all that, they travel into the woods and try to enjoy nature and um, taking a deep breath they 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 smell the place to be stinky and they discover that oh god it's polluted by trash oh no this campers they're uh they're little bugs oh no that's not great at all and yeah what do you think the setup's good (laughs) <laughs> How dare they abuse our family's product? <laughs> yeah. <That's the> fun. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Apple Blo- in, in one panel, Apple Bloom is just horrified by the trash littering around there and it's Apple cores. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so, anywho, moving on to the next day. Um. I'm just guessing that the CMCs didn't manage to go camping, I guess. But anywho, um, the CMCs uh, plan on gathering all the students from their school to do a bit of cleanup. Uh, we we see that almost everybody in school is there. We see Slips and Snails, uh, we see Twist, we see... Ah oh, man, I forgot that pony's name, uh, and also Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, and Featherweight. Ah yes, that's his name, Featherweight. <clears throat> but he's a bit different in color, so mm, yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, probably what? Probably Heather didn't get the note on that one. Yeah, I like it. But anywho, um, as we see them cleaning the forest and so on. Uh, we see Silver Spoon complaining that, oh man, this is, uh, I, I don't want to do this. This is not my job. I, I'm not responsible for other people's fault and so on, blah, blah, blah. And there's a voice off to the distance that says, maybe not, but just because we didn't cause it doesn't mean we don't need to fix it. And it's Diamond Tiara. And she gives a motivational speech to everyone that uh, they have uh, sorry um it's their responsibility to keep the forest clean and beautiful and wow you would have thought one of the cmcs would say something about it but not her and we find out later that um the white tail woods uh, white tail was it uh, white tail wood yes the white tail wood is has a special 
connection to her. She uh, she has uh, precious memories of the place. Um, she tells uh, Sweetie Belle that uh, she hangs out with her grandma who lives in a cabin in the woods. Uh, they go hiking and so on. And her grandma likes to tell the story about the spirit of the forest. Uh, she said that uh, spirit of the forest. Uh, she said it's the guardian of the woods, uh, a great mythical beast that keeps the place healthy and growing. Uh, she said it still hides in the forest and so on. So it is a very mystical creature. Yay! Uh, but as time goes on, we see them uh, cleaning the place and making uh, making it beautiful. And somehow, off into the distance, we see a very strange creature. Hmm, I wonder what that is. It's probably the evolved Pokemon. What's it called? Uh, from Chikorita, The Last Evolution. Oh, God. Uh, the Ganyan. Oh, yes, that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, if you said Discord, I still believe it. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, uh, the next weekend... Uh, not <laughs> Time is warp and spendable, whatever that thing is. So we, we see the CMCs go to the forest, trying to go camping again, and we see that it's polluted again. And they mentioned that it's not that long since they, uh, what you call this, um, where is that? Uh, give me a second. Okay, it's weird. It's only been a few days since we clean. Uh, how... Is there so much trash already? So, I'm guessing time-wise, they went camping on a Saturday, cleaned the forest on a Sunday, wait about a week to go back camping, and it's dirty. So, that is strange, yeah. How could it be all dirty since no pony is going there for camping and so on? So, we, we do see that <clears throat> uh, Sweetie Belle is really pissed off. And I, I kind of like her depiction in this. Angry Sweetie Belle. Who, who knew? She, she has an anger problem. <laughs> Yay. I look at the, pic, at the image of her uh, uh, initial reaction. The, the, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, the moment from... Uh, what was that? Hearts and Cooks Day. <laughs> you know the one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but... <laughs> oh, come on! Yeah. I, I, I just love... Um, content creators. I, I, sorry, official content creators like the comics. Giving a bit of personality to some of the characters. Because in this show, we, we don't really see uh, Sweetie Rage that much. Um... We don't even know if she rages or not, but we do know she has a slight temper. But in here, we really see it, and I like that. Well, she likes camping. That much, that much obvious. Mm, I'm trying to remember, and I think so. Huh. It's been a while. Remember that uh, that episode when they went out camping? It was mostly a scoodle episode where she has nightmares. Yeah, yeah. Was was it her? Oh, man, like I do remember that. It's rarity to go out with her. Yeah, I do remember that. The whole house with her. Yeah, I mean, and that's when I discovered the word clamping. And that, you know what? It is a thing. It is a thing. Clamping is a thing. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> but anywho, continuing on. Uh, the CMC says, all right, girls, we, we need to do a stakeout. We need to find out who is responsible for um, trashing the woods. And they stake out on the tree. Uh, they take a look-see until it's the next morning because kids can't really stay up late. And once they get up, they discover that, oh no, um, there's more litter. But they do see ponies uh, littering the place. And the girls chase after them. And discover that, oh, there's a lumber mill? There's a lumber mill in Whitetail Woods. 
uh, this catches them by surprise because hmm um how, how do they not know is it a secret i mean stuff so anywho um sweetie bell goes up to one of the ponies and tells him that uh, all his uh polluting and your mother would be ashamed of you <laughs> yep and <laughs> your expression gets me every time yep 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 like <laughs> apple bloom has to hold her back and tell you you can't just tell uh ponies that their mother would be ashamed of them i mean that is true but still man oh god so they discover that the lumber mill is run by filthy rich so they decide that hey why don't we go meet up with filthy rich because uh he has a connection to the woods and whatnot because diamond tiara says so so they go up to the front uh, sorry the reception and ask to meet up with filthy rich and this is something cool. Uh, there's a continuity uh, with the story because uh, when Filthy Rich, um, how do I put this? When Filthy Rich uh, greets the girls, uh, he says that ah, oh, adventurous slash detectives, um, marking the what you would call this story where yeah. the CMCs were known for detective working. What was that called? Yeah. I reviewed the whole thing and I don't remember it. Uh, yeah, I got it on the tip of my tongue uh, as well. Uh, hold on. Uh, Real Mysteries. Ah, uh, yes, Pony Real Mysteries, yeah. <laughs> That's a mouthful. But still, um, Filthy Rich greets them and they talk about how the forest is covered, uh, is littered with trash and whatnot, and it's done by their men and so on. And somehow, from that it turns into lumbering and i'm a, i'm at a loss for this because i i'm a bit how do i put this i'm a bit confused with the direction now because suddenly from trash to uh lumbering and okay so we're changing gears now eh all right all right so uh, trying to put that into perspective, we see that um, uh, Filthy Rich here sees potential in Whitetail Woods to get the best, uh, what you call this quality of wood from Whitetail Woods and giving it to most of the ponies around the world to craft their work and whatnot. And yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, he's not wrong. But at the same time, too, it's it portrays him as a evil philanthropist. Yeah. So he 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 tries. <laughs> I'm not hundred percent sure about this, but I I think he manipulates the CMCs to be the bad guy for this. But uh, he gets the attention of all the workers and puts the spotlight onto them. And uh, making the face like they uh, he's pointing at them that they tattletailed on them, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing, I mean, <laughs> personally, I my brain checked out on this, and I, I got no idea, like, what, what, <laughs> like I mentioned before, uh, my brain check out, and it, it'll take me a bit of post processing to get everything, but. From what I can tell, uh, okay, after tattling on the workers, uh, feel free just says, all right, cool. Um, I'll, <clears throat> starting from today, uh, uh, he wants to have every pony uh, to use only posted trails to come to work. And also he'll be putting trash cans along the way so that they won't pollute the forest that much. And you know what? That's it. That's a good effort. Um, having the workers go through one trail minimizes the, um, what's this? Waste. Uh, true, not that. I mean, uh, minimizes the spread of trash around the woods. And having trash cans, or what did they say? Trash cans? Yes. Uh, having trash cans around the place does um, minimize the 
or makes things easier for to clean later on. So I mean, with that, we, we see that uh, problem A for the comic has been quote unquote solved. And yeah, but then transfer it to problem B, yeah, the bigger one. As the CMCs go out, we see that oh, um, <laughs> we might have work cut out for us. And and here's the part. Because if you take a look, see in a few panels ago or a few pages ago, uh, the yeah, it's a mirror the image. <laughs> yeah, it, it was know. not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Except this part isn't uh, in the water. Uh, okay, I, I I see why. I see why. It's it, this is behind the building, but man, yeah. that's still really. And with that. The comic is to be continued on the next issue. So, yeah. <clears throat> with that, um, let's go to final thoughts. What do you think, man? I mean, it's been fine. Although the reception part, uh, where the green market sailors get to the board, uh, that's not how the lines are supposed to work. <laughs> you know, those telephones where you, uh, there's basically these cups and the lines attached to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and, I, and we know that they have inner comes in Equestria. <laughs> you know, <laughs> technology in Equestria in G four is a bit is a bit confusing. I, I'm not yeah. going to defend or complain and stuff, but it's just confusing. And then if people say that, oh man, it needs to be realistic. You get G five. <laughs> how does Kuf uh, uh, clothing I mean, work if they're just touching the surfaces of each other? Uh, I mean, uh, no comment, man. Like, I, I don't want to go. I, I don't want to go into G five tech. That that is on. Uh, and I I believe I'll talk about that when we do G five. Yeah. But as for now, I'm I ain't got to question tech in G four anymore. Uh, uh, if any tech happens, I'm gonna blame it. Uh, I'm gonna blame it on sunset. <laughs> <laughs> Although you know what would be better in this case, right. if they did have intercom, it would have made it even more awkward. If well, when the receptionist calls Filthy Rich and he asks her, when he asks her back, "Do you have any distractions handy?" <laughs> Imagine just going out loud. Mm, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. But overall, what, yeah. what do you think of the book? Uh, it's been fine. Mostly, although this end transition from being simple, uh, we need to clean up the trash to deforestation problem. Uh, that's a quick leap. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree with you on that one. Like that, that, <laughs> that totally um, flip tur turned me upside down and uh, got me uh, really confused in terms of how I'm supposed to feel. Uh, personally, for me, uh, the story was fine. I, I like the story. I, I like the beginning. I, I like how the CMC is gathered everyone, and I do enjoy that uh, Diamond Tiara was the one to advocate for cleaning the forest. I mean, honestly speaking, if you would if you were to think, uh, the bratty ones are not supposed to be the ones to be uh, doing that. Um, you would think that okay, maybe the CMCs or some other character, or so on. But to have Diamond Tiara have affinity for the forest or for Whitetail Woods, that's something special. Yeah, that was an unexpected one. Mm -hmm. uh, this comic also shows uh, that she's basically finally grown to her, uh, well, what her truly marks represents, what was the whole point of when CMC got their truly marks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> And yeah, I mean, when 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 the problems turns into a what you call this, um, a de deforestation plot, it's it's complicated. Like it's it's one of those things where, as a grown up, you know that there are certain rules for lumbering and so on. Uh, there are certain restrictions, there are certain rules, laws, and so on that needs to be passed, and with this like in your mind or in my mind uh, I think that okay for 
filthy rich to start a lumber mill, he has to go to the proper channels, uh, probably go to what you call this, uh, Mer Mer. Princess about it. Probably Mer Mer first before the princess. And then, like, if you do go to a princess, who do you go? Do you go to Twilight or do you go to Celestia? And then, I mean, there's a whole procedure of how do I do this and so on. And if I'm not mistaken, in the second issue, he didn't go to those channels. He just did it himself. Yeah. Oh man, uh, I could be wrong. I don't remember. It's been a while. This this comic came out before the pandemic, so <laughs> yeah. well, just a small nitpick. Uh, I check I check the map of the Crescent and Whitetail Woods is uh, way way further away from uh, Pony. So technically, it's out of Mary Main's jurisdiction. Oh uh, yeah, like that, see, there's that, <laughs> there's another thing there too. I mean, uh, and wouldn't Whitetail Woods be a um, protected landmark or something? I mean, that's that's one of the few things that, as an adult, you know a lot of laws and rules that stop this kind of um, abuse. But, eh, well. But, <laughs> uh, getting back on track, the initial comic and setup is really good and makes you want to go in depth. Makes you want to see what there is more. Like, it makes you want to read the next issue. Yeah, it's got that foreboding shot mm -hmm. right at the end. Yep. And if you're a bit confused, like, oh no, that was fast. They work really fast. No, no, this is the back. You, you need to go to the front. Ah, the front is much better. <laughs> why would he do that? Well, why would... When you think about it, right? Why would... Filthy Rich... Usher the CMCs out to the back instead of the front... Well, he did uh, say that it's a uh, faster way home. I, he did? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> but still. Oh, man. Well, okay, anywho. <clears throat> uh, let's let, let's uh, wrap things up. Let's wrap things up. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show you can contact us at abshowgmail.com you can also reach us on the twitters the show's twitter account is at NBA show and my personal twitter account is at Norman Sun. so uh, Jakob where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt page uh, yeah, uh, hold on Jakob von Torkar or on the twitter page uh, Tales of the Ashes and if you're interested in uh, reading uh, MLP fan fiction, you can find me under the JFT. All right, all right. Go check out, guys. And also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PrintedLive.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you like support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review, discussion, podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, this is going to be very confusing because I know stuff, but the patron relationship manager is not telling me, <laughs> uh, which is strange, by the way, because um, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, myself, like, and also Tristan, but I do know that Jeffrey and also you, Jakob, has been uh, supporting the show too. Am I right? Yeah, I did recently. Yeah, so it's it's not showing up. So that that's why I'm a bit. Yeah, it's pro my mail probably didn't come through uh, for this month. Yes. Yeah, probably, probably. But still, uh, thank you so much for the support. And yeah, I, I hope you do like the uh, exclusive and the, the content and whatever insanity that I post over there because it's kind of <laughs> I wouldn't say it's great. But I say it's very telling. <laughs> but anywho, where's the script? Yes, okay. So anyway, uh, I have been Norman Sanzo. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the show. See ya! Bye! -bye.